Satoru Gojo is quite simply one of the most hacked characters in fiction. On the other hand, Black Clover has been notorious for having incredibly potent abilities long before Jujutsu Kaisen got popular. But a lot of JJK fans think Gojo can solo the Black Clover verse, and on the other side, a lot of Black Clover fans think that even weak characters like Seke can defeat Gojo. But I'm here to tell you that it actually lies somewhere in the middle. So today I wanted to have Gojo at his peak, match up against the Magic Knight captains in a series of 1v1 matchups against every captain we've seen in action in the Black Clover series, both current captains and past captains. That even includes captains like Gildre and Julius, as well as the freshly appointed Grand Magic Knight, you know, Grinberry All. All in all, there will be 13 captains matched up against the Enlightened One. There is something about this discussion that is incredibly fundamental. Curse energy versus mana. I think that it is typically always the best practice to use verse equalization, as it really is only fair. So you can say that curse energy equals mana, or I guess even better comparison would be negative mana. I've made this a point in previous videos, but you don't even necessarily need verse equalization to determine if different energy systems can clash. As long as they are similar enough, they should be able to. Negative mana and curse energy are both born and amplified by negative emotions. Curse energy creates cursed spirits. Negative mana creates demons and devils. There's a lot more similarities, but I'm gonna be using verse equalization anyways. But for those who don't like verse equalization, well, it doesn't matter. If curse energy and negative mana are that similar and mana works on negative mana, yeah, it's gonna work either way. What will be interesting about this video is that while things like power and speed will be important, abilities are going to actually be far more important. Gojo has some pretty notorious hacks and not every captain is going to be able to get past them even if they are far stronger or faster than him. I'll be going over Gojo's important abilities. The Limitless Curse Technique paired with the Six Eyes allows for Gojo to manipulate space at the atomic level and create the Neutral Infinity. This ability forms a space around Gojo that infinitely slows anything down so that it will never touch him. There seems to be two different versions of Infinity, his natural one that blocks out everything no matter what, even his allies, and his passive one that seems to struggle at working on things like poisons. When Gojo amps his Infinity, he gets blue, where he can pull on things, whether that be pulling his opponents or even pulling himself to move faster. He can also pair the power of blue with his physical punches, in order to increase his striking power. When he amps the infinity with positive energy, it makes red. Instead of pull, it pushes and is twice as powerful as blue. When Gojo combines red and blue, he gets hollow purple, which pushes and pulls at the same time. Depending on the translation, hollow purple would be matter erasure, as when imaginary mass collides with mass, both will disappear from reality and cancel the other out. When Gojo goes all out, he can do an unlimited hollow purple, where it's not just a small attack, but it's an explosion of his hollow purple ability, giving him very high range with his purple. Gojo's domain expansion, Unlimited Void, is nearly a guaranteed victory as he instills his opponents with information that they will be forced to experience infinitely. Gojo, of course, can use RCT to heal himself constantly from damage and has anti-barrier techniques like Simple Domain and Falling Blossom Emotion. While we don't really see it too much, Gojo can teleport. He also has a massive advantage over most of the captains with his stamina, as the six eyes give him nigh infinite stamina. Keep in mind that even though Gojo does have hollow purple and unlimited void, he very rarely starts the fight with them, but he would be more likely to attempt to do so against some of these stronger captains because he would sense their magic power as being superior to his cursed energy. So I believe he would take all these fights seriously if he ever just saw any captain you basically see them as somebody stronger than Tsukuna, so he would be on guard. I want to give some quick scaling notes for the captains that most would scale to. I will eventually differentiate some of the captains that don't scale to these power levels though, but I want to rush through this section quickly because I'm sure most of y'all know how Black Clover scales if you've watched my videos in the past. An early series villain, the Fire Spirit Summoner, vaporizes an ocean, which is multi-continental. Reeve, an apostle of Sephira, dwarfs that power and creates moons in Glamour World and her power is nothing to a Licht who is half asleep. Licht then gets his full power, surpasses his limits with an ultimate magic spell, and absorbs the power of the other apostles. This will put this spell in these small planetary ranges of power, and yet it doesn't even dent Zagrid's magic power. And then Zagrid gets power clipped by the time skip. As Asta gets well over 100 times stronger in just the first few episodes of the time skip, Asta already scaled to this small planetary Zagrid, and then with that 100 times boost, Gaja, while holding back, is able to one-shot Asta. And later on, Asta's base form is implied to surpass his peak power as he's able to fight other spirit guardians in his base. And even Gaja notices how strong Asta is just by looking at his base form which should imply that he's stronger than his old power, which scales even Asta's base well into the planetary or even large planetary ranges that most of the captains would dwarf, as most captains scale well above Asta's base form. Since almost all of them fought the Dark Triad, 
when they were using higher percentages of devil power. And you really could get the captains to large planetary or higher, even in the spade saga, as 80% Dante can create a singularity that would weigh as much as a gas giant. And hell, Black Clover often has their creation feats discounted, whereas Naruto characters get to have theirs pretty much automatically accepted. Dorothy's Glamour World has numerous stars in it, which could put Elf Saga high tiers at multi-solar system level. And it's actually an infinite space. This could put her and any relevant character in Black Clover at high universal levels of power. However, which way you want to scale it, high ball or low ball, the captains are simply far stronger than Gojo. As for speed, base Asta has this speed feat in the Elf Saga of outspeeding Merleona, and it's just under 200 times the speed of light, meaning that most of these captains would be many thousands of times the speed of light, as they are all way faster than base Asta. The first captain that Gojo will be doing battle with is Gildre Poizat, the treacherous captain of the Purple Orca. And while I can feel the pressure of every single one of you rolling your eyes, come on Broku, that fat fuck isn't doing anything to Gojo. But when it comes to an abilities matchup, Gildre is nearly the perfect match for going against Gojo's curse technique. Gildre has permeation magic, this makes it so he is invisible, but also intangible to all forms of magic. While intangible, his mana cannot even be sensed. Put it simply, while Gildre is intangible, all forms of magic pass right through him. This is why his magic is considered invincible, meaning that things like Infinity or Hollow Purple would phase right through Gildre and do nothing to him, giving him a pretty glaring advantage of being able to waltz right through Gojo's inviolability. But that's actually not going to matter whatsoever. A lot of people seem to forget that just because you can bypass Infinity doesn't mean you can beat Gojo. Gildre would still need to be powerful enough to not only damage Gojo, but land a significant enough blow or target the right area to get around his healing. And Gildre is probably the hardest of all captains to scale because he is practically featless in terms of attack potency or even speed because of how often he uses his permeation magic as a crutch. As in the anime, Gildre creates these soldiers with his magic, and yet every single captain takes these soldiers down with ease even though they can't even see them. And when faced with Rill hunting him down for his betrayal, Rill was able to easily ensnare him with his magic even though it was actually stated he was going easy on Gildre. Rill is one of the weaker captains, and captains at this point are max continental levels of power. I cannot with confidence scale Gildre to that, and he wouldn't even be faster than light at this point of the series. Whereas Gojo has arguable planetary attack potency for scaling above Yuki, she was able to turn herself into a black hole and have the power to suppress that black hole. This black hole was stated to be able to destroy the world and apply to have planetary mass. Gojo as the strongest sorcerer should scale above this. I understand people not liking Gojo scaling to it, but Kenjaku used used his powers to resist it, Yuki weakened it, and Tengen's barriers suppressed it. So unless if you think the combined powers of Yuki, Kenjaku, and Tengen just dwarf Gojo's power, then he should still scale at least relative to it. Besides, it just makes it easier to compare him to Black Clover characters this way because they reach similar tiers, at least at the lower end. Gojo also scales above two and a half times the speed of light because a weakened Sukuna dodged these electromagnetic waves from Kashimo. Electromagnetic waves are light speed, and mind you, that was a tired Sukuna. So Gojo is stronger and faster than Gildre, but Gildre is intangible, but it just doesn't matter. Gildre's intangibility only applies to magic. If Gojo punched Gildre, it would actually damage him. And sure, Gildre is invisible and cannot be sensed, but I think the six eyes could sense Gildre. If Gojo as a child could sense Toji who lacked cursed energy, then I think he'd be able to sense Gildre in some way. We also know that there is a time limit for Gildre's permeation as well. So either Gojo tracks him with the six eyes, outspeeds and one-shots him, or he waits for Gildre's permeation to run out and takes the W. Kaiser Gramorca was the captain that replaced Gildre and is far better in almost every single way. Known as the Shield of the Clover Kingdom, Kaiser possesses vortex magic that allows him to both nullify and reflect spells. But the actual practicality of it is very hard to gauge. Does it nullify the magic because the vortex is just moving that fast? Or do these torrents have the properties of power nullification or power reflection? It's really hard to say. In the fight with Fogolion, the Lion King says that Kaiser's vortex is both washing his magic away but also that it passed right through his mana skin and damaged his body. Which is pretty impressive considering that mana skin already has resistances to power nullification. Like when Noel was able to resist Kaven's power null, which would mean that Kaiser's Vortex has the ability to damage people with power nullification resistance. Which is important considering that Gojo does have power null resistance, he displayed that against the disaster curses. The issue is that Kaiser is also hard to scale because the majority of his abilities are nullification and not power. He'd probably have a large speed advantage though as his speed would still be above the 200 times light speed calculation. Calculation, but Kaiser's magic is so vague and his attack potency is lacking, I'm gonna give Gojo the win here. I think that having an attack phase through someone's mana skin just isn't comparable to having an attack bypassing infinity. So that either Gojo outlasts Kaiser and nails him with purple, or he traps him with a domain expansion and wins. But that's now two victory royales for Gojo, but keep in mind that every captain from here on out would scale above that baseline I scaled earlier. 
Real is a character who I thought was guaranteed to take an L against Gojo, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized that Real has the tool set required to take down Gojo. First off, he does have the firepower and speed as mentioned, because he is a lot stronger and faster than Gojo. On top of this, Real can amp himself with Twilight Valhalla, but the key ability for the spell is that it makes it so that neither he nor his allies can die. So while Valhalla is active, Gojo cannot kill Real. Conventionally, Real has nothing right now that can bypass Infinity right away, but he still has the potential to do that. It is stated that with his painting magic, he can choose any magic that he wants because he can just draw it. That means he could draw elements that would eventually bypass infinity. Sukuna adapted to cut space, which bypassed infinity, meaning that if Rill drew space magic, he could do the same and bypass infinity. But there's also nothing stopping him from drawing light magic, which is made up of photons, photons being far smaller than atoms, which means light should bypass infinity because it only manipulates space at the atomic level. He has also seen permeation magic before, so he might be able to draw it. As long as Rill can last long enough, then he probably would eventually draw one of these things, especially if Gojo's cockiness unveils any of the information of the Limitless to Rill. Normally, Gojo's six eyes always gives him a stamina advantage, but not against Rill. Rill has the ability to make runic arrays and has mastered true magic. Because runes take the mana of the nature around them, it gives runic masters the ability to have infinite stamina as long as they are not touched while using them. Since Rill is far stronger and faster than Gojo, he cannot be killed, has the ability to use multiple types of magic that could bypass infinity, and is a match for Gojo's stamina. Yeah, I think Rill is going to be taking this W. Dorothy Unsworth, the witch captain who may have just become the queen of witches, possesses the incredibly powerful dream magic. She's able to create the world of dreams, an infinite space that she has complete control over. Anyone inside of the glamour world will slowly be put to sleep. And I do believe that Dorothy is just an absolute counter to Gojo. Not only is she around Rill's power, meaning she is stronger than Gojo and far faster, but she can use battlefield removal as she teleports things into glamour world trapping them in there. Teleporting would be a form of spatial manipulation something that Infinity is weak to, so I do think that Gojo can get BFR'd into Glamour World, and I don't think he has a way of breaking out. Yami could not use a regular Dimension Slash that cut space or dimensions to break out of Glamour World, he had to use his strongest version to destroy the entire space, which is a range that Gojo simply does not have. But if you find BFR boring, Dorothy can win with other ways, like snapping her fingers and teleporting her magic onto items and disassembling them. She should be able to snap her fingers and damage Gojo. But she could also just as easily fight Gojo inside the Glamour World, and summon over 16 Yamis, all of them having the ability to use a Dimension Slash, which, teaser for later, would get past Gojo's Infinity. So Dorothy is taking the win here as well. Charlotte is around Rill's power level since she fought alongside him and is shown to be pretty comparable, so she would also be far stronger and faster than Gojo, but the real question is, can she bypass Gojo's hacks? Charlotte in her Briar Queen form can actually absorb curses and their energy, using that power for herself and turning it against her opponent. The stronger the curses of her opponents, the stronger she becomes. But I think it would be akin to a name fallacy to assume that she can actually absorb Gojo's curse techniques. Curses in Black Clover are more typical curses, whereas curses in JJK are more like the equivalent of demons or devils in Black Clover. If you personally want to say that her Briar form works on Gojo's techniques and curse energy and she can just absorb them or revert them back at Gojo, then she does win. I just don't see it happening. But there is an actual shot that Charlotte has at winning, that is that she has the ability to outlast Gojo. She also knows how to use true magic, so she can essentially fight forever and not get any weaker or slower, unless if she does get hit. I could really go either way on this one. I think it's kind of a tie. It's kind of like who will outlast the other. They both have infinite stamina. Charlotte's way stronger and faster. Gojo has the hacks to defend himself. I really don't know who wins that one. Jack the Ripper, captain of the Praying Mantis, has slash magic that has already been proven to work on Gojo in his own verse. Jack's magic gets faster and stronger with each slash, and his magical blades actually adapt to the magic that he slashes. He's kind of a mini Maharaga, except Jack has already adapted to space before, meaning that his slashes would go right through infinity, and each slash would adapt to cut through even better. Furthermore, Jack has already adapted to cut through regeneration, as well, meaning that Gojo probably would not be able to use RCT to regenerate if the slashes do cut him. Jack is of course one of the stronger and faster captains, so he has those advantages over Gojo. He can also surround himself in those blaze, which would destroy any of Gojo's attacks launched at him. Gojo just never had a chance against this insect, who is a walking counter to him. Up next is my boy Fraud Golion. Even though he's become kind of a joke in Black Clover, he's still incredibly powerful, and yes, he would be stronger and faster than Gojo from having scaling to the other captains. The issue with Fragolion is that he doesn't really have any hacks or abilities that would be that useful in this fight. He uses fire, and he rides a salamander, but he ain't got no way to bypass infinity. He also didn't learn true magic, so there is no way for him to outlast Gojo. So it's either Gojo outlasts him and defeats him with a normal attack, or takes him out with a hollow purple, or he traps Fraud Golion in his unlimited void after eventually wearing him down.
William Vengeance actually has a shot at this with his World Tree magic, as the roots of the World Tree passively absorb the magic reserves of all of his opponents in the area. If William can actually absorb Gojo's cursed energy, then I think that he has a chance of winning, as he can passively weaken Gojo and possibly reduce his cursed energy levels to zero, which would then shut off his cursed techniques until his cursed energy restored. The real debate is whether or not the roots can actually absorb Gojo's energy. We aren't really told how this ability works. If there is some kind of a force that surrounds an enemy and extracts magic power, then Gojo would likely be protected against this by his infinity. I think it's a bit of a leap just to assume that William's roots would absorb Gojo's curse energy, and because William does not have access to true magic, I think there's a good chance that he would actually take the L against Gojo. Nozel Silva of the Silver Eagles is one of the strongest captains of the series, as he was able to actually fight and damage the Supreme Devil, Megicula, and has only gotten stronger since then in the current saga. But he might just be able to get past that chink in Gojo's armor. That is that Gojo's passive infinity actually struggles to discern poisons, and mercury is a poison. Even the databook refers to his poison as a dangerous substance. Because of how much faster Nozel is than Gojo, and the infinity not being able to sort out the poisonous mercury, he should be able to land hits on him. With Nozel being many times stronger than Gojo, and being able to poison him as well, I don't think Gojo can take the W here, unless if it's confirmed that Gojo has been able to actually adapt his infinity to poisons, then Nozel takes the W here. Mariliona is of course one of the strongest captains, even though she really isn't a captain anymore. But she did have a brief stint while her brother was in a coma. She's incredibly powerful and her flames are potent. She has Hellfire Incarnate, where she literally starts to fuse with mana itself, and then she passively gets stronger and faster as her flames get hotter. And it really saddens me to say that she doesn't really have a win condition here. Gojo's infinity should hold strong, and Mariliona cannot last very long in her Hellfire form, as she'll get too close to mana. It is possible that over the 15 month time to give that she had mastered Hellfire, but it's something that we simply do not know for sure yet. And she does have resistance to matter erasure as Morris was doing something similar to that, and she was able to destroy the tentacles, resist them, and when they did end up working on her, she can just grow back her limbs, but now they're made of mana instead. So there is a good shot that she is taking on some of those hollow purples. Still, she has no real way of bypassing infinity, so Gojo outlasts and traps her in an unlimited void. Okay, I don't think this one is really that contentious. It's kind of been known for years now that Yami just completely negs Gojo. Dimension Slash is cut through space, and we've seen him destroy an infinite-sized realm before with his Dimension Slash Equinox. And while there was debate on whether or not Dimension Slash would work on Gojo's Infinity, Sukuna would eventually answer that question for us, as he would defeat Gojo by being able to target space itself. So yeah, Yami ends Gojo with the Dimension Slash, and let me debunk one of the silliest downplays about Yami, and that is that Dimension Slash is slow, or that it takes him a long time to cast it, that could not be further from the truth. It's really just people cherry-picking statements about dark magic itself being slow, and forgetting that it says that Yami makes his dark magic fast by pairing with a sword and his physicals. We see his Dimension Slash move even faster than one of Jack's adapted slashes, and there are numerous times where Yami activates a Dimension Slash in the midst of battle. Gojo is not running from this. And let's say somehow Gojo gets Yami in an unlimited void, well... Yami has his own simple domain on steroids. Yami can create a black hole and then fuse it with his mana zone to create a spell called Black Moon that effectively nullifies the magic that tries to attack him. This should act as a simple domain equivalent and protect him from the unlimited void, and then Yami could just cut the unlimited void in half with Dimension Slash. Also, any of Gojo's abilities like Purple would get nullified by Black Moon. I know that Gojo has some form of power null resistance as he went against the domain amplifications of the disaster curses, but we also see that he couldn't do this to Sukuna. Domain amplification is a nullification by essentially using BFR, as it teleports the enemy's curse technique into the empty domain. So Yami's power null should work on Gojo, and I think that everyone knew this was coming, another win for the captains. As I said, I am including Julius Novocrono on this because we have seen several fights where he's a captain or of captain age. As we saw him fight Conrad in the movie, Julius was only a captain at that time, and we see Julius age himself up to fight the ancient demon. We see him as a 33-year-old in the movie, and he is weaker than Conrad Leto. We know that Conrad is strong enough to take a hit from Black Divider Asta with minimal damage, and Conrad is actually holding back at that point too. Julius is weaker than Conrad, but he still should scale at least relative to the other captains in the Spade Saga, as he is able to fight and damage the Ancient Demon, and was stated to have magic power as strong as it, even though that Ancient Demon made a mockery of Kaiser. This should give him a speed and attack potency advantage over Gojo. Julius does have the hacks to win this one too. With Chrono Anastasis, Julius takes control of time within a space to turn it off and bind his opponents. But it also shuts off the magic power of his opponents, meaning that if he were to activate this on Gojo, it would shut off his curse energy, thus shutting off his limitless technique. Julius also has sealing magic. We know the last time sealing was used on Gojo. Yeah, Julius takes the W here. Finally, last but not least, you know of the Golden Dawn, who now shares the same rank as a captain of Grand Magic Knight. 
but also William basically appointed him the captain mid-battle, so for all intents and purposes, he is a captain now. Yuno is by far stronger than all the captains, you can even argue in just his base form, as when he goes to save the kingdom, Yami is pretty much shitting his pants, at just Yuno's base power. I see a lot of people try and argue that Yuno's Neverland defeats Gojo, I don't think so. Neverland just stops time within the spell, and then amps Yuno and his allies and nerfs his opponents. Gojo has already moved and time stopped. All Neverland is going to do is buff Yuno and nerf Gojo. And yes, this specifically should nerf Gojo because Yuno actually manipulates the space itself, and since Gojo is within that space, it should nerf him. But Yuno still needs to bypass Infinity to win, and I believe that he has two ways of doing that. One is the Spirit of Zephyr Sword. The interesting thing about this sword is that it actually is created by using the magic in the area around Yuno to forge along with his and Bell's magic. This is why he could affect Zagrid's magic because it had Lumiere and Lake's magic inside of it. We know that Gojo's own abilities can bypass infinity. Hollow Purple, which is literally just infinity amped by positive and negative energy, was able to go right through infinity and damage him. So if you know create Zephyr, it would have some of infinity built inside of it and should allow it to bypass and destroy infinity and thus defeat Gojo. But we've also seen that Yuno can attack the insides of his opponents with Mana Zone. Mana Zone allows for a mage to attack from anywhere within the Mana Zone they control. We've seen Yuno make a many, many miles sized Mana Zone, so Gojo will certainly be inside of that. Yuno will then be able to attack from the inside of Infinity and hit Gojo, or inside of Gojo himself. So Yuno does win this one, whichever way you choose. So yeah, Gojo does beat some captains probably, but there's a chance that a lot more of them could win. If they use Mana Zone like Yuno has, we have only seen Yuno do it this way where he created magic inside of an opponent. That means that any captain outside of Gildrea could feasibly defeat Gojo, since they are stronger than him, and then they could possibly bypass Infinity by teleporting their magic inside of it with Mana Zone. But since we've only seen Yuno do that, I'm only giving it to him. But realistically, any captain should be able to replicate it, but that would make this video incredibly boring. There's another point I needed to bring up about Gojo's domain expansion to end the video. In a sense, it essentially is basically a guaranteed victory if he does activate it and trap the captain inside of it. Really, Yami is like the only one who has a guaranteed way of basically breaking out. You can also argue that you know too, because he is manipulating space with his Neverland, so his Neverland might just basically overpower it. But here's the thing with Gojo's domain expansion. It takes time to activate it. A lot of people like to assume it's an instant activation, but that has never been the case. That is never something that you assume with any character's ability. And it was basically proven in the fight with Sukuna that it does take activation time, as he barely activated his domain faster than Sukuna. So because all the captains are way faster than Gojo, they're basically not going to be getting trapped in the domain expansion until they've been tired out. And here's the thing. If Gojo tries to do a domain expansion early and he does not catch them, well, he's losing to any captain. Because remember, after a domain expansion, the curse technique is burnt out. Now, Gojo did learn how to repair his burnt out curse technique, but it does take time. Time he would not have against a captain. So if he does do a domain expansion, he does not actually capture them because a captain moves out of the way and is not captured by it then Gojo does lose. Another way Gojo would lose would be something similar to how he was losing to Sukuna in the Domain Clashes. Mana Zones being bigger than the Domain Expansion. If a captain has their Mana Zone activated, they could possibly attack from the outside, winning the Domain Clash. I don't know, it's hard to say. Mana Zone, would that protect them? Would that also act like a Simple Domain for any of the other captains? It's very similar. Mana Zone and Simple Domain, or Domain Expansions, I guess, are very similar. If you equalize them, then captains of the Mana Zone would be able to actually fight within Gojo's domain expansion. But either way, I still think these are the way that these things go down. Gojo wins a few, maybe he ties with Charlotte, but overall, he does take a lot of L's here. But there are ways for him to win more, but there are also ways for the captains to actually win basically every single one. Barring Gildre, he just really doesn't have a chance to win. So yeah, I think that Gojo is actually a bit underrated by Black Clover fans. I think that, yes, there are a lot of Black Clover characters that do beat him because they do have the ability to do so, but Gojo would still be a threat inside of Black Clover because of how powerful he is and how powerful his abilities are. If you guys didn't end up enjoying this video, please do leave a like and comment your thoughts down below. What other Black Clover and JJK crossovers would you like? Also, if you want access to more of my videos and access to all videos early, become a member of the channel. You can also follow me on Twitter or join my Discord link down below. Hope you guys all have an amazing day. Peace out.